Alright guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well and today I'm going to show you something pretty cool. So I found this tool recently that lets you convert an image into a 3D surface inside a Fusion 360. You've probably seen a few tools out there that do this on the web, such as creating lithophanes for 3D printing, but usually you're kind of limited because it just spits out a file and you can't really modify it. So the fact that you can do this inside a Fusion 360 is pretty awesome, especially if you're interested in 3D carving as well. So let's take a look and I'll show you how it's done. So in order to do this, we're gonna to have to install an add-in for Fusion 360. The add-in's called Image to Surface, and it was created by this guy. This is his GitHub. I leave this in the description below. It's extremely useful, it's worth having a read. It shows you how to set everything up, and it just gives you a few examples of what you can achieve. So if I scroll down a little here, you can see that somebody was able to mill this penny here just based off an image. And that's what I'm gonna show you in a second. So let's jump into Fusion 360, create a new project, and then come up to tools. Click on this drop down where it says add-ins and click on script and add-ins. Now in here you wanna click on the add-ins tab and notice I've got a few add-ins in here already and one of them is image to surface. Now yours probably isn't gonna be in there by default and you actually need to add it in. If we click this little plus button here, it'll take us to a directory. And notice in mine, I've got this file called image to surface that contains a bunch of scripts and useful tools so that Fusion 360 knows what to do. So what I'll do is I'll create a zip file of this image to surface that I've got here, just so you can use the exact version I'm using so there's not gonna be any compatibility issues. All you need to do is take that file, unzip it, and place it in this directory here. So if I click my toolbar at the top, you can see the directory I've got. I'll also put this directory in the description below so you can clearly see it. Go to this um, file here, so we've got Fusion360 slash API slash add-ins, and it's inside this add-in file that you need to place image to surface. Once you've done that, you just have to select the folder, or click on the folder, click the button select folder, and that'll add the script into your Fusion360 environment. Once you've added the script in, you should see it here. Just click on it once, click on run. You'll see this little message pop up, click OK. And then when we come back up to add-ins here at the top, click the drop down, you'll see a button that says show image to surface. We're gonna click that. You'll see another window pop up that looks something like this. And this is it, this is the image to surface tool. So what I've got here are two images. This first one here is a very large image, 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. And the second image is resized down to 500 pixels by 449. What I'll say here is that I'd avoid using really large images because it's probably gonna crash your Fusion 360 or even crash your computer. Resize the image down to a more suitable size, like something like 500 pixels, just because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. And we don't really need a huge amount of pixels to create these 3D surfaces. Once you've decided which image you want to use, click on this choose file button. It's going to ask you to pick an image. I'm going to pick this resized image and hit open. That's going to put the image straight in here. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in. You can also rotate it. So if you click and drag, you can see what it's doing here. It's creating those surfaces based on the depth of the image and it's really really interesting actually so we've got a bunch of settings up here in the top and pixels to skip what that basically does is it skips a bunch of pixels so that you can scale the image up right so if i want to say skip five pixels so we're taking the value of every six pixel and condensing that down into a smaller image if you reduce pixels to skip you're not reducing the image but you're using more data from the image so that can be a bit of a trade-off if you are struggling and the models slowing down Fusion 360, adjust the pixel to skip and you might get better performance. We've then got settings in here like step over and max height. So if I rotate this around just by clicking, if we adjust max height to something like 10, you'll see the image update and it does exactly as you'd expect. It changes the depth of the surface. So I'm gonna make this back down to something like five, just for this example, because five seems like a nice number to go with. We've also got a little checkbox here called invert heights. So if we zoom into the image and we go to a darker area, you can see on my beard there, it's a lot darker than the rest of the image. So what that does is it sets that to a really low point and any lighter areas are set to a higher point. And this is how you get that depth inside the model. If we click invert heights, what it does is reverse that. So now the darker areas are higher and the lighter areas are lower. This doesn't look great and it kind of messes it up. So I'd recommend keeping that unchecked. Once you're happy with the image and your model in general, you can come over here and click Generate Surface, and that'll create that model for you inside of Fusion 360. It can take a while, depending on the spec of your machine, and as I said, if you're using a really large image, it could potentially crash it as well. It's created a model for us inside the Fusion environment, and if we rotate around, you can really see that it's added depth there. You can see the image. If I sort of scroll and rotate over to the top of it, 
You can see the image very faintly, but we're going to improve that now in a second. So what we've got here is a mesh, and to clean this image up and make it look a lot better, we can convert it to a surface using T-splines. So if we come up to the Solid tab, and we click on Create Form, we want to click that, then come up to Utilities, and we're going to go to Convert. Now that'll bring up a menu here on the right, and we want to click this drop down and choose Quad Mesh to T-splines. Then we need to select the surface that we're going to convert. We're going to select our image, and then we're going to hit OK. And what this will do is it will convert it to a much cleaner, smoother image. It's going to look a lot better if you're going to do something like 3D carving or 3D printing. So you can see that conversion is complete and it's already starting to look a lot better. But if we hit finish form, it'll get rid of that grid and it'll really look nice and smooth. And there we go. How awesome does that look? We've just taken a standard JPEG image and really smoothed it out using those T-splines and surface modeling. Now what's really interesting about this as well is that if we go back into the form editor, so down on the timeline, if I double click on that little purple thing, we can go here and modify this. So there's a bunch of different controls and different forms in here that you can choose. And if there are certain areas of the image that we don't like, we can bring them out or we can send them back. Surface modeling is a little different to your standard 3D modeling, but it's really interesting. And if you want to play around with it, this is a great way to do that. Once you're done making any changes, you can just hit finish form at the top and that'll take you straight back to your standard solid workspace. So if you want to put this image onto say a surface, so you could create like a plaque, what you could do is come up to create sketch. We're just going to create a brand new sketch on this plane. Grab the two point rectangle tool. We're just going to sketch out something that's the same dimension as this plaque that we've created. We'll set up some dimensions for that as well. So we'll have 165. We're just going to leave it as it is. It's just for demonstration purposes. And 148. If we hit finish sketch, we're going to hide the body for a second. Now we're going to extrude. We're going to select our sketch here, show body once again, rotate underneath so that we can see the surface of the other model. And then we're going to come up to the menu on the right and we're going to extrude to object. And then we're going to select the surface of this model. And what that will do is it will extrude our plane upwards to match all the T-splines. If we rotate this back around, hit OK. You can see what it's done now is it's created this solid surface underneath. And this is going to let us 3D print it or 3D carve it on some kind of surface. Now if we want to add some depth to it, we can just extrude again. If we click extrude and click the, the bottom face, we can pull this down. So if we set it to something like 10 millimeters, click OK. And there we are, guys. That's where you can take an image and turn it into a nice 3D surface or even some kind of 3D plaque like this. Personally, I think this is really, really cool, especially that you can do it inside of Fusion 360. As I said, there are other tools out there on the web that'll do this for you, but they usually just spit out the STL file and you can't modify it. This is awesome because it's inside the environment. We can do whatever we want with it. The most appealing thing, especially, is the CAM application of this inside of Fusion, but also the 3D printing as well. So I hope you learned something today. I hope that's been useful. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos and I'll catch you in the next one.